Just a heads up, I'm going to get very angry this review. Look, you were queen, and you made a decision. I may not think it was the right decision, but that doesn't matter. I used to look up to this person. Lady, what happened to you? Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, I'm here to talk to you about Star Versus. Or more specifically, Queen Moon. Have you ever grew to love a character? Maybe at first they weren't your favorite, but over time you grew to care for them, you accepted their flaws, their idiosyncrasies, and loved their development, and then you get season 4. And the showrunners throw them in the trash, douse them in water oil, light a match, and give you the episode here to help. That's what it feels like when I saw the episode. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. Just, who is this character? Moon is the mother of Star. Get it? Because Muni is matriarchal, Moon rules as queen in her own right. When we first meet her, she's a boring, stuffy queen with a stiff upper lip, and she just finished marathoning the crown. She wears fancy frocks and keeps up the status quo. As St. Olga's likes to say, she's a rubber stamp. And I didn't realize this until season two, but I thought Moon was old. Like, she was one of those moms who either got pregnant super late in life, or because humans are implied to live longer than humans, she was easily in her centuries. I didn't understand until she put her hair down and we got all those flashbacks. She at worst, mid to late 30s. Possibly early 40s. Like, around Ida or Lilith's age. Disney really likes to have their mamas look older than they are. She rules so good, her subjects are like that one uncle who lives in your grandma's basement, sleeps on a futon, and eats TV dinners. We've never had to before. You always took such good care of us. You gave us good jobs and a nice home. Don't worry, we'll get there. She seems at first to exist as a plot device, a blocker so Star doesn't go too crazy. Don't send me to St. Olga's reform school for wayward princesses! Sweetheart, we're not sending you there. Oh! Yet. I remember there was a point in time where we all thought Moon got sent to the school, hence her being so cold and unfeeling. It's telling that when we got a couple episodes about Star and her father, we don't get what about her and her mother. She does jumpstart certain conflicts, like kicking her husband out of the house so he has to move in with the Diaz's, or putting added pressure on Star to succeed, but we never get anything about Moon as a person until season 2. That's where Storm the Castle comes in, where after everything that happens, Star has to stand before her parents. You abused your magic. Frightened Mr. and Mrs. Diaz and destroyed your wand. Did I leave anything out? Of course she'll get sent back home. So, you're not mad. No, I'm always mad. But I'm happy that you're safe. Okay, this moment was really sweet. Throughout the next two seasons, Moon begins to come into her own as a character. I won't go too into it here since I have a bad habit of giving away too much exposition before I get to the meat of the problem, and this script is actually 30 pages, but Moon's development here was really good. She was probably my favorite character until we got Eclipsa. Sure, she's racist. I just think that monsters would have less of a reputation if they didn't act so bloodthirsty all the time. But they show there's a reason for this. Doesn't excuse or justify it, obviously, but they still make her sympathetic. I was a happy-go-lucky girl like you, and then Toffee and his monsters killed my mother. And they make the point Moon has the capacity to get better. I should have realized, but of course, you're a parent too. Then comes the second half of season three, where after a fight with Meteora, she gets half her soul sucked. Moon! Ew. And goes into literal fight or flight mode. <laughs> Wait, so how did Moon know about the Realm of Magic? Couldn't she have used that knowledge to help Star? They left the Realm of Magic so unanswered, I think I need to do another video on it. Let me show you this scene, if only because it will be relevant later. I am ending this. Some trial and error later, Star does rescue her, there's not much you need to know about that front. And then we get to Moon Remembers. In the time since Star met Eclipsa, she's realized the royal legacy is a lie, and Eclipsa was imprisoned for loving the wrong person. Because of Moon's absence, Star has abdicated in favor of Muni's true ruler. It even gives her the wand. Things haven't been right since my family took the kingdom. The best thing I can do as queen is return what my family stole from you. Again, keep this in mind because it will be relevant later. Moon meets with Eclipsa, and the tension is so thick you can cut it with a Solarian blade. It's really impressive everything you've done! Moon! Do you remember me? Do you remember what I did? The two women do try to bond, and it seems like they're going somewhere. Then we get dinner. Star did the same thing when she was a baby. <laughs> Babies do the darndest things. 
<laughs> Afterwards, Moon decides to leave with River. It's Eclipsa. You guys look like buds. You were jamming back there. I don't trust her. Which is okay, that's Moon's right. She invites Star to go with her into exile, but Star declines to continue helping Eclipsa. With this, Moon decides to do something she hasn't been able to do ever, having fun. And she'll start doing that by toughing it out in the wilderness. Too bad Moon is a natural born leader, work is her play, so just looking at caterpillars is fun for all of five minutes. <laughs> Do you have to do that? Trust me, I'm somebody who doesn't really like to work unless I have a passion for it. And vacation and downtime are fun, but they're only fun because you know it's going to be over. Four months of summer is the worst part of college. Eventually, we get to one of my favorite episodes, Down by the River. If I had to explain it, it's kind of like a reverse of that It's Always Sunny episode where Mac and Dad has moved to the suburbs. Hitting you in the chest so hard you think your heart's gonna stop. You ever been in a storm like that, Wally? During this time, Eclipsa has been putting a lot of her monster reparation policies into place, and one such policy affects the Maisley family. What are you doing in our house? Actually, this is our house. It belonged to my great, 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 grandmother before the Mumins went and took over these woods. This I like! Star Versus is no stranger to showing that things aren't truly black and white, even when you're making progress. And change doesn't happen overnight. Of course there's gonna be setbacks. I'll never really be gone, cause I've got good ideas! You do have to wonder why Eclipsa didn't think to provide the families with housing, temporary or otherwise. The Maisleys didn't even realize they were living on monster property. Didn't you wonder why the rooms were so big? Or the kitchen sink? You mean the swimming pool? Forced into the woods, the family needs Moon and River, and promise not to be a burden for all of three seconds. What are you doing? It's the middle of the night! Oh, we're protecting you from the hookman. Cute nightgown. Sure, the Maisleys are annoying, but they do provide an outlet for Moon's boredom, in a way for her to lose her temper. I have had it with you! Leave! Leave now! Leave! Well, topic, but this episode is special. Normally, an episode where a bunch of characters annoy somebody who did nothing wrong isn't very funny. It's annoying. For SpongeBob, I usually turn a blind eye to it due to nostalgia, but I will concede that Squidward wanting to just enjoy his Sunday, or he had a bad dream and now he wants a mental health day, isn't enough justification for him to be annoyed. This episode works for one reason, karma. Did you ever hear the saying, give a man a fish and feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, feed him for a lifetime? The spellbook explains explains the Mumins are how they are because they don't know how to take care of themselves. They always had somebody to lead them. Skywind's people are starving, so instead of teaching them how to make food, she makes food rain from the sky. Solaria has a monster problem, so instead of conscripting the people, she does it herself mostly. We're pretty used to this by now. It's fine. It's not fine. Yeah, seems like a lot of work. Spoiled doesn't always mean spoiled rotten, but whoever you care for, you should strive to be sure they can be self-sufficient enough they can survive without you. Also, this episode features perhaps my favorite joke in the show. Just to give a little background, the Maisleys are convinced that if they go out past dark, some scary guy called the Hookman will get them. In full moons, he wanders the forest, finding unsuspecting victims to hook. And after Moon forces them out, they somehow encounter him. Oh, it was terrible. He hooked us into buying homeowner insurance. But you guys don't own a home. Yeah, <laughs> he's good. Feeling remorse, the two parties reconcile, and Moon teaches them how to forge. Pretty good episode, but I warn you, this is the start of the end. A few episodes later, Moon goes to Butterfly Castle, which is still destroyed, and is said to be haunted. Turns out it's actually Mina Loveberry who's doing the haunting. Oh, I didn't recognize you with the uh, new do. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Mina Loveberry! Before we go any further, I have to say that Mina's probably the most divisive character on the show, next to Star herself. Sure, the MHC get a bad rep, but nobody compares to Mina. If you want to know, I did like her at first. The message of your heroes can be evil people was a much needed one, and I considered her pretty tragic after we got her backstory. But this lady needs a nice long stay in solitary confinement. We also get another reveal. Throughout the season, Eclipsa has been a pretty unpopular queen, since the Mumins are scared of change. Sorry about all of this. Man, I still don't trust her. Yeah, she's only doing this to make herself look better.
It's to the point of surviving an assassination attempt. In a breakfast banquet, her food is poisoned with yada yada berries, which aren't very effective poisons because they wear raw. How did Mina get them into Eclipse's food? And what was she gonna do after? Was she just gonna knock Eclipse over? Stora and Marco spend a little time trying to find a culprit, but they gave up because they realize everybody has something against Eclipse. Uh, why? To get rid of Eclipse, of course, but that tricksy queen fooled Manfred into eating them instead. You think learning this, Moon would be a bit cautious. Eclipse's mother is Solaria, Mina's former queen, i.e. the person she pledged her life and loyalty to. Even Eclipse isn't saved from the chopping block. She's a coward and a traitor to her mother's legacy. She tries to tell Mina to gently go into retirement. Lies! I took an oath, and as long as the enemies of humans exist, I will never stop fighting them! So Moon gets home, and this is where her character hits rock bottom. Oh no! How are you going to stop her? I won't. It isn't my job to take care of everyone. Eclipse is queen now, and that means she'll just have to deal with Mina on her own. Okay, time to rant. Moon, you might not be queen anymore, but you still have a duty to your kingdom. That's why you and River keep taking people in. And that's why you stayed queen even after you learned the truth. Why are you gonna let this nutcase go free? And why isn't Mina arrested or behind bars? This really bothered me. In season 3, she kidnaps several monsters and attacks Star, Moon's only daughter, and Star's boyfriend at the time, the crown prince of another kingdom, and one of their biggest allies. If Moon didn't dispose of Mina, that can be pretense for war. Not only that, but she knows Mina's gonna try again. She's willing to put Star in the line of fire. Why? Star doesn't have the wand anymore, and Mina has shown no problem attacking her in the past. If this was season one, you'd order a manhunt. A problem I have with Moon, not just for this episode, but the whole show, is how selectively oblivious she can be. Goodness, you're right. Giving you that spell to destroy Toffee was her idea. Oh no, wait. You were the one who went to her for help. With Eclipse, at first it's understandable, since you can argue she got brainwashed by the MHC, and Eclipse's price would turn a few heads. But now that you met Eclipse and spent time with her, you know at worst she was just super selfish. And you also have that whole episode where you learn most monsters are decent people. Moon not following her duty is super out of character. That brings us to Coronation, where Moon is invited to witness the titular event. I don't know how widespread this opinion is, but I think the show should have ended here. Maybe there's like one or two plot points dangling, but if this was a series finale, I don't think the hate for the show would be as bad as it is. The Kingdom realizes Eclipse and Glaugor aren't bad people, the MHC are exposed to the racist frauds they are, Romulus is in handcuffs, and Star says she wants to go to Earth. Maybe just one scene on Earth? And other than that, it would be a great stopping point. Star goes to invite Moon, but the stress of everything gets to her. After this, I am out. I just want to be a teen again. Oh, Star. You've grown up so much. Your devotion to the kingdom is truly commendable. Arguably, this is a good moment, even if I hated what came before it. I just want to point out Moon is watching the ceremony. She's not just a background character, she's reacting to it, and her husband stands up for the queen's consort. That man was willing to stay in a crystal to keep his family safe. He's a dad. Just like the rest of us. This is all going to be important later. That's the last that we see of her for a while, since the plot goes to Earth where Star tries to act like a normal teen. This is the first time Eclipse has to act as queen on her own, without Star to help her. Good thing she has Glogor by her side, in a kingdom that will now support her. Probably think when Star is gone, Eclipse went crazy and did something. Obviously, she must have started World War III. Maybe she got carried away and Muni is dealing with a mysterious illness. Maybe she read the spellbook wrong. Who knows? She must have done something evil. Well, from what I can tell, Eclipse did like nothing. This is enough for the magic I can mission to want her gone, and to hire Mina to do the job. Look, I just want that monster smoocher out of Muni. She's our best option. Okay, I was saving this for another video, but like Moon, their sudden hatred of Eclipsa makes no sense. The whole reason they thought Eclipsa was evil was she tried to marry a monster who sired a child on her, and tried to use dark magic. I can kinda get why they did it, since Glopcor was a cannibal king. Marco, I don't know what we're gonna do about... The plucker of limbs. 
So how do they not know she's gonna plan something or sick him on people? Besides, Shasta Khan was probably the one who told them, go capture Eclipsa. They were just following orders. 300 years later, why continue this charade? Throughout not only the season, but the whole show, Romulus learned time and time again he was going too far. There was a whole episode where Star taught him you can't just go on your gut without evidence. I think you need to think stuff through a little more before you rely on your gut. It's making you crystallize innocent people. Maybe you're right. The MHC were one of the biggest problems with Season 4, since, like Moon, they saw what happened at Corno Nation, and they made the point they do have standards. We don't trust Eclipse either, but if you think putting everyone here in danger was a good idea, you're the bad guy here! Eclipsa isn't bad. Both the Butterfly family and the people of Muni said they were alright, and yet they still won't listen. If it was just Romulus doing this, it would be alright. It would still suck, but it's just one guy, not the whole group. We didn't need all of them. Omnitraxis and Hecaboo are pretty rational at the best of times. There's even a scene in the Book of Spells where Omni tries to tell Festivia she should learn to make nice with the monsters, but she listens to Hecaboo and continues on with the war effort. I thought that was a hint he'd tell them not to go after Eclipsa, or he helps star, yet nothing comes of it. We'll be back to our glorious schedule of weekly meetings with the Queen, and the pre-meetings, and the meetings to schedule meetings, and the post-meeting, and- Anyway, somehow, likely through them, Eclipse and Globgor find hundreds of Solarian warriors attacking them, led by Mina Loveberry. Then, Moon arrives, and she reveals- Are you- are you working for Mina? No, Mina's working for me. Not only that, but she was the one who told Romulus to release Globgor and likely used her connections to get him out of prison, or with that stage too. Okay, this is my biggest rant, and this is where Moon hits not only rock bottom, but the center of the air, all the way down. She hits the Lucidors. So Moon was the one who armed Mina and the other warriors. Why? The once rational queen resents a woman who did nothing wrong. You're the reason I was lost in the magic dimension. You're the reason I was separated from my family, from my daughter. That was an accident, Moon. You know that. Play that scene again. <laughs> no! This is not true. One, Eclipsa was just protecting her daughter. Please, Meteora, come back to me. I... <laughs> Two, Eclipse didn't mean to do it since she never learned how to use magic without the wand, likely because she was frozen all those years. And three, Eclipse is not responsible for everything that happened. Star gave the crown up to Eclipse willingly. Eclipse took the wand from Star to stop Meteora, but Star was on the ground with a stuffing beaten out of her, and Eclipse gave the wand back after she was done with it. Well, thank you for letting me borrow this. Next, Eclipsa was just trying to rule. You know, the job she was tasked with. The worst thing she did was try to release Globgor, but she never actually did it. Star didn't need to help her, Eclipsa didn't kidnap her, she did it willingly. To top it off, because Eclipsa is the most valuable mommy, she apologized to Moon and offered to let her stay at the new castle. Eclipsa didn't kick her out or force her to go into the woods. She went there herself. And Star calling her mom out in the second to last episode doesn't help the situation. Justified for once, Star goes off on her mother. Mina was already planning to overthrow Eclipsa. It trust me, I stopped her from doing far worse. Play that clip again. It isn't my job to take care of everyone. Eclipsa is queen now, and that means she'll just have to deal with Mina on her own. Um, no she was not. What's up with the writers inventing stuff that never happened? Moon tells Eclipsa she'll have the warrior stand down. If, and only if, Eclipsa gives up her queenship. And if I don't do what you're asking, what then? Things could get worse. This always bothered me. Couldn't Eclipsa have just used the spell with no name? She said she didn't want to be like Solaria. I swore I'd never use any of my mother's spells for fear of turning into her. And yet, here I am. <laughs> Star. The last season, she learned you had to do what you needed to do. I'm sorry. What did you do? What I had to be the perfect way to help her growth. For some reason, I really don't know why, Eclipsa gives the wand back. And despite Star being right for once and being resentful, Moon has the absolute gall to say this. Eclipsa's right, Star. As queen, it is your duty to do what is best for your people, even if they end up hating you for it. 
honestly, this could have worked for me if we got evidence that Calypso actually did something wrong as queen. Like I said, maybe she went overboard. We never see any evidence of this being true, beyond being a slightly unpopular queen. The whole season, we see Eclipse are doing queen stuff, and lots of it is what you're supposed to do. Like, have diplomacy parties with people you don't like. Maybe at worst, her actions caused people to leave Muni, but that was their own choice. It'd be like moving to another country because your political party lost the election. I mean, depending on the circumstance, of course. Sure, the Maisleys are a different story, but Eclipse had never told them they had to go into the woods. I'm sure they could have found another home. Again, could this plotline have worked? Yes. One idea I heard was, what if Moon's Amnesia stayed? Does this mean your memory is back? It's getting there. Huzzah! Or the MHC find her before Star does, and they fill her head with lies. Like, Moon, you have a family, but Eclipse, the, the mean old witch, took them from you. She's the reason you are how you are. Perhaps they could re-educate her on how to use magic, and she uses this to arm the Solarians. Moon not being in character in that situation would have worked. The way they did it here, it was terrible, like a first draft fanfic. Moon had no reason to be the way she did, beyond they wanted a cool reveal they didn't need. I think if she approached the idea to start, would actually saying, I'm starting a coup, would have still been bad, but it wouldn't have come out of nowhere. Maybe, Star, do you want to be a princess again? I never told the soldiers to attack the monsters. You know how overeager Mina can get, but I would not attack innocent civilians. Moon tries to calm down Nina, and surprise, surprise, Mina, the total nutcase, isn't following script. Where's Globgor, you monster fangirl? Globgor is no longer your concern, Mina. Oh, but you're letting them off too easy! What? A crazed racist loon who won't listen to reason? So Moon tries plan B. You don't understand. I you may have created the warriors, but we pledged our loyalty to Queen Solaria! This comes out of nowhere too. I can get maybe this would apply to Mina, since she was the one who actually lived during Solaria's life. The rest of the soldiers, in that flashback, clearly weren't pledging to anyone. I even took a second look at the Book of Spells myself, since I own a copy. In nowhere in Solaria's section does it say anything about pledging yourself to her to get magic. It just describes how she breeds the soldiers. In FYI, it's not what you see here. It's kind of complicated and it involves a lot of animal blood. Like with Moon being a traitor, it felt like they did it for the sake of upping the stakes, for somebody who didn't need them. Since now, Mina is free to exterminate all the monsters she wants. I guess maybe they were worried we knew Mina was mostly a joke character, so they tried to make her seem more intimidating than she really was. It didn't work. Thankfully, depending on how you look at it, Ekavu takes the group to the tavern at the end of the multiverse. You know, in hindsight, that place is kinda dark. It's like the Faceless Man Fountain from Game of Thrones. This quaint watering hole sits at the end of reality and at the start of complete non-existence. These people left their dimensions to get away from magical issues or power-hungry rulers. I'm sure lots of patrons get a drink and then let whatever happens, happens. Yeah, yeah! Okay, that's like really dark, and I'm surprised I could put on Disney. Super irritated and deservedly angry, Star goes off on her holier-than-thou mama. What is there to talk about exactly? We can't go back to Muni because we'll die from a situation that you caused. So just stay far away from me. Or better yet, stand over there. For once, Star is right. And I have nothing to say except it's beautiful. <laughs> is that your daughter talking to you like that? Also, now I'm supposed to feel bad. You didn't earn my sympathy. What you did was so stupid. Now you realize you did a no-no. Because Star called you out on it now? It's not like she did that before. You traitor! <laughs> Behind my back. Oh what, you couldn't hear her over all those spells she was casting? Eclipse invites Moon to play around a pool, and proving that despite abandoning her kingdom for a human eater, she is once again the better person. You know, I never got a chance to thank you. No, I mean thank you for freeing my husband. I should also mention, this is the episode where Star realizes that magic has been corrupted. Instead of, I don't know, fixing the issue at the source or being better than her predecessors, she decides to commit what amounts to a full-on universal genocide. I'm gonna destroy the magic. An 
And I know everybody says it, but Nina was not a good justification for this. Not that there is. But the show was going for a statistic choice, like the characters are caught between a rock and a hard place. This was not how they were supposed to do it. Sure, the monsters getting slaughtered is obviously going to be horrific, but on a galactic level, it's not that bad when you start to think about it. Maybe it'd be one thing if Mina took her campaign global, but by all accounts, if Mina is perfectly fine with the MHC, I think she'd be fine with the pony heads and the Lucidors. In Star's universe, many beings not only use magic to survive, they're made of it. The MHC are living, but they were still created by Glosseric out of magic. No magic means no Glosseric. Marco brings this up to Hecapu and her response. Yeah, sure. Blow it up. Look, if I'm being honest, I always had the feeling this stuff did more harm than good. That's not fulfilling enough. It's like she doesn't even understand the full ramifications. The Tavern episode implies that the former queen's immunity live on in the wand. In the next episode, when the magic disappears, so do they. So not only is Moon perfectly fine with killing what amounts to trillions of men, women, and children, but she's also fine with effectively killing her own mother. You know, the person who raised her as a single mother, the person who loved her above all things, who meant well but whose death arguably pushed her down a dark path. Do you resent Comet for doing her job as queen too, Moon Pie? I mean, you resented a clip so for far less. Moon, as bad as she is, is a very the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few person. Are you happy? Happy? What difference does that make? Not, my daughter is throwing a well-deserved tantrum and she's obviously upset. So instead of making it up to her by, I don't know, taking her out for ice cream, or at least saying sorry, I'm gonna help her commit a massacre that make Fano say you're going too far. The show didn't have enough time to properly make the point that what Star wants to do is wrong on so many levels. They pretty much just say, oh, okay. And a lot of what the crew said later on felt like massive cop-outs. The laser puppies just became normal puppies. Even if Star made them with her magic, so they should technically not exist anymore. Star never agonized over her decision. Her only complaint was that she would never see Marco again. But that's not fair. Just add him in there, like maybe holding my hand or just... Stop. <laughs> He belongs with me! Boo freaking boo. Sure, Star is very one-track mind, but she has grown as a person this whole show. There's also the fact that, I think this has been said before, but the show is all about Star trying to be different and making the point this is a good thing. You all did this because you don't trust me and what's worse, you don't trust Star. You have to have faith in her to make choices that are best for her. Mr. Candle Cares, one of my favorite episodes. Star realizes she will be queen one day. If you're going to be queen, you have to look the part. Don't worry so much about happiness. It makes you look pale. Love you, bye. But that doesn't mean she has to adhere to needless protocol if she doesn't want to. I'm still gonna be queen. Yeah, but that doesn't sound like a bad thing because you're gonna run Muni your way. Star doesn't want to keep up the status quo, but she gives the job to somebody who has the experience and fortitude to make Muni better. Star ends up at a reform school for wayward princesses, and instead of drinking the brainwash sauce, she starts a rebellion. Star's actions in the finale are antithetical to the whole show. She only got the idea because Glosseric told her, this is your fate. So I have to destroy the magic. When Star is the kind of person who would charge on even if he said that, you think Eclipsa or Moon, both of whom are pretty level-headed, would tell her, Star, maybe we should take five minutes to think this over, or stop her themselves, but no. They're like, oh, okay. Actually, Eclipsa does try to her credit. Wait, Star, what if we all go and fight Mina together? But Moon doesn't even react. Yes, three queens fighting for the good of Muni. No! Even if, as Star points out, what she is going to do is what Toffee wanted. I guess this means Toffee was right. That dude who killed Comet at a peace treaty signing, and who tried to kill Star and Star's best friend, who made Moon grow up too early. Why would Moon be cool with this? So Moon goes with the group to destroy the realm of magic. Lots of things appear that don't come up again, and they are able to accomplish their mission. For all the problems I have with the finale, this moment was meaningful. Oh, would Moon and Comet. It looks like the age of magic is coming to a close. And with Eclipsa in Solaria. For what it's worth, <laughs> I think you made the right choice. 
even if I do have the added issue that while it brought tears to my eyes, Solaria being cool with Meteora felt weirdly out of character. And honestly, I think it should have been its own episode. The spellbook implied she lost her mind. She thought killing monsters made them happier. And she fought Eclipse that would finish her total annihilation spell and carry on her work. The show ends with Moon and River and Star being one big happy family. All is forgiven, and it's a right surge at all this because now she can be with Marco. Okay, this video was way longer than it needed to be, but can you blame me? Moon was one of the best characters in the show. To me, at least, she had the best arc, at least until we got Eclipsa, who was practically perfect in every way. Season 4 felt like everybody but Marco got derailed by some degree. Star became a preachy, self-righteous hypocrite. The MHC became one-dimensional. Thanks to you guys, I am well aware of what happened behind the scenes, but it is still tragic to see the final result once again. Star vs. used to be one of my favorite shows, probably my favorite Disney cartoon before The Owl House. Gravity Falls and Wander Over Yonder were cool, but nothing could compare to Star. I remember watching Battle for Muni the night it premiered, and tuning into the round table every week they posted a new video. I just can't believe what happened to it, and I can't believe what happened to Moon.